computer called HAL. And for those who were intelligent enough to experiment with the name HAL and progressed the letters one forward in the alphabet from what they were in the movie, H became I, A became B, and L became M, and they were able to see that the symbol was of the largest at that time when the movie was made, and the corporation that was on the cutting edge of computer technology, IBM. It was significant that man had built this technology, this computer, which had an artificial intelligence and was capable of communicating with the astronauts, and yet they had forgotten to put a switch in the machine which could be turned off at will. Now, you have to understand that this is all symbology. Hal represented many things. He represented the atomic bomb, the hydrogen bomb, chemical warfare, bacteriological warfare, represented the state of the art of technology where it became so complicated that no one man could be an expert in it, and thus might unknowingly participate in the building of a technology which could destroy him, yet he only worked on a part or a portion of it, the knowledge of which did not indicate to him that the end product could be a danger. And we see that happening now, don't we? Where everybody has to specialize in one small portion of technology because the overall picture is so complicated and so far beyond our understanding that we see the prediction made in the movie 2001 actually becoming true before our very eyes. Just in my lifetime, I've seen automobiles that I could take apart and put together blindfolded myself as a teenager to driving automobiles that I can lift the hood and not even recognize most of what I'm looking at except that I know that it's an engine in there and I know that it's got a fuel delivery system and some kind of a system that ignites the fuel but the technology has surpassed my ability to take it apart and put it back together again without many months or years of specialized training. And this has occurred across the board in our technology. And as I've told you before, I will tell you again tonight, dear listeners, in secret, Whatever you perceive as the state of technology in the public eye, the very cutting edge, in the secret they are a minimum of 50 to 100 years ahead to the point where science fiction is no longer fiction and hasn't been for quite some time, but is in all actuality science fact. You saw this battle play itself out on board the spaceship where ultimately there was only one astronaut left fighting the battle against Hal. And he was able to make this jump in his evolutionary consciousness and he was able to fool Hal and turn off the computer. But when he did so, he knew that he had relegated himself to permanent separation from his fellow human beings back on Earth. And folks, the message was not that he went into space to affect this separation. Space was just the vehicle through which it was conveyed in the movie. The message was that the new man will go into the future and the rest of us will perish. We will not be allowed into the future. If we are, it will be as slave labor 
until we are no longer useful and then we will simply be exterminated. The message to the vast army of initiates in the mystery school was we are on the threshold of the new age and into this new age will march only one one man. It is the new man. It is the illumined man. It is the man that is able to make the evolutionary jump to no more war, to no more rape, no more pillage, to the level in the mystery school known as 666. It is the number of a man. It is the illumined man to the mystery schools. To those of us who are Christians, it is the symbol, the mark of the beast, the indication that the Antichrist has arrived, and the beginning of the time predicted in the book of Revelation known as the Tribulation. Now all of this that I thought I knew so well and understood has become even more mysterious to me now as I know that I am battling against something that is almost incomprehensible and I have had to do it alone by myself not trusting anyone else not letting them in for fear that they would corrupt my mind and I would be led down the wrong path. And I still do not know the answers, but I have an awful lot of clues and a lot of facts, and I've learned an awful lot. And maybe I am more confused than I ever was in my entire life. But after you hear the results of what I've learned, and after I am, for the first time since I've learned all of this, communicate it to other human beings to let you know how really confused I am, maybe all of us being confused together can put the pieces in their places and patch this mystery together and come up with what we need as answers to formulate a future that we can all, all enjoy. Without fear, without wars, without lies and deception and manipulation, without elitists, and terrorists and crooks and liars for I'm going to impart to you during all of this that the priests of the ancient mystery religion are the ones who have caused most of the misery in the history of man and if they had not learned this knowledge, the secrets of the ages that they keep from the rest of us and use to manipulate us, maybe, maybe we would have reached peace in this world hundreds of years ago. I don't really know the answer to that. But I don't think much of what has happened in the history of the world that was miserable, terrible, would have happened without these people. But I may be wrong, and as always when you listen to this show, don't believe a word you hear unless you could substantiate it in your own 